Hey guys, welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. So last week I got a question from a guy who needed to generate 250 lower thirds for a virtual graduation ceremony he was working on. Now, needless to say, he didn't want to have to enter in all of that text for those lower thirds manually. And he asked me if I had a solution. Well, this week is my answer to his question, and I'm sure it will both delight and surprise you. Before we get started, the workflow I'm about to show you is dependent upon a third-party app. Just go to the Mac App Store and enter CSV to Motion, and this app will come up. I've also included a link in the info section below. The app is only 10 bucks, and as you'll soon see, worth every penny. And full disclosure, this is an app that I use myself, and I'm not being paid to promote it. With that being said, what this app does is take a CSV file that is generated from a spreadsheet like Numbers or Excel, then convert that data to motion projects. So here I have opened a spreadsheet in Numbers. For this example, I want to generate lower thirds with a name and a title. It's very important that the info you want generated appears in line one and are separated by columns. I have a column labeled name and another column labeled title. The app supports up to five columns, but for simplicity's sake, I just kept it to two. I also deleted all the empty rows and columns. The next step is to generate the CSV file. From the file menu, choose export to CSV. Name the document and save it to your hard drive. Now there's one small issue that I ran into that must be addressed. Right click on the CSV file and open it in text edit. If you look at each line, the column data is separated by a comma. After talking with the developer, I learned that depending on the locale, some CSV formats can vary and the app needs to see semicolons as separators and not commas. This is something that will be addressed in a future update. But for now, an easy fix is to do a text find and replace. Press Option Command F. In the Find field, type a comma. And in the Replace field, type a semicolon. Now click the All button and save the file. We'll come back to this file in a moment, but for now, let's jump into Motion to create our lower third. I'm going to choose one of the built-in lower third templates by choosing File, New from Project Browser. I'll select the Snap theme then choose the Snap Lower Third and click Open a Copy. Playing back the project, it's a simple animated lower third with two lines of text. Spilling open the text elements group reveals two lines labeled Name Here and Description. I intentionally chose this particular lower third because the number of text elements in this project matches the number of columns generated by the CSV file. So keep in mind that if you have five columns of data, you'll need five text elements in your motion project. Let's save this project. I'll name it Snap Lower Third and save it to my desktop. Awesome. Now let's open the CSV to Motion app and set it up to generate all the lower thirds we need. Locate the CSV file you edited and drag it into the well in the upper left. You'll then see two columns of text appear in the lower part of the window. Now locate the lower third motion project and drag it into the upper right well. The next step is to set up the routing options. You'll be routing the name info from the CSV file to the name here descriptor from the motion file and the title info to the description. Next, click on the destination directory and create a folder for your saved motion projects. The last step is to generate the motion files by clicking the button in the lower right. A window appears telling you what to do next, but I'm gonna walk you through that. Locate the destination folder and open it. Inside, you will see that a separate motion file was generated for each line of text in the CSV file. Now we want to batch render all these motion files out to ProRes using Apple's compressor. But there are a few steps you need to take in compressor prior to importing these files. First, you need to create a custom preset. Locate the Apple ProRes 4x4 setting and duplicate it. We're using this ProRes flavor because it allows you to save the movies with an alpha channel. In the Video tab of the Inspector, place a check next to Preserve Alpha. And in the General tab, set the format to Video Only. Let's rename this preset to ProRes Lower Thirds. In order to save even more time, press Command-Comma to open Preferences. Then from the Setting menu, choose ProRes Lower Thirds. What this does is save you from having to apply the preset manually to what may be hundreds of motion projects. 
We'll leave the location set for source, which will place the rendered movies into the same source folder as the motion files. Close the window. In the Finder, locate the folder of motion projects that were generated by the app, then drag them all into the batch window. The ProRes preset I created is automatically applied to each job. So here's the money shot. I'll select this job and play it back. It's an animated lower third with my name and title. Now I'll select the one below it, and you can see that it's Mark's name and title, and then Travis' name and title, and so on. Every line from the CSV has been turned into a motion project that can now be batch rendered out. Just in case you're not already blown away, consider that you can do this with up to an 800 line CSV file. In other words, you could potentially generate 800 lower thirds if necessary. So let's render this out by clicking the Start Batch button. Click the Active tab to view the renders in progress. Once the job is complete, locate the lower thirds folder, and you'll see all the ProRes movies sitting alongside the motion files that generated them. Let's quickly preview them to see how they look. So the only thing left is to import these into Final Cut Pro and add them to our project. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please let me know in the comments section below what you think, and please consider subscribing. We're getting close to 70,000 subscribers, so I wanted to thank you for that. We'll see you next time on MacBreak Studio.